Well, welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to our candidates, uh, candidates night. Thank you to our candidates for joining us. My name is Jeff Day, and I'll be the moderator tonight. Um, I provided, or Jeremy did anyway, provided everyone with the uh, ground rules for the forum tonight, so I uh, won't go through those because everybody sh should have had those already. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Maureen Nicodus to be for being our timekeeper, and hopefully I did okay on your last name. <laughs> and uh, for our candidates for Senator District 34 and State Representative District 148, we have Joe Rafferty, who is current Senator of District 34 from Kennebunk. Uh, and uh, we have Bradley Scott Ducharme, who is the candidate for State Senator. And we have Thomas A. Levine, who is the current State Representative. And we have Tristan Lauzoe McComsey, who is the candidate for State Representative. If you would all please uh, join me for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and, and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, so the uh, um, order of uh, questioning, we're just going to go left to right. Uh, and um, we'll start off with uh, each candidate telling us you know, in doing a uh, basic introduction to yourself so that uh, folks in the community can uh, get to know you a little better. So, Scott? Hi, folks. My name is Bradley Scott Ducharme. I go by the name of Scott, and I was born and raised in Wells, Maine. Um, I live in Kennebunk currently, and I'm running for Maine State Senate District 34, and that includes the towns of Kennebunk, Kennebunk Port, Wells, Berwick, and North Berwick. Um, I was born and raised in Wells, like I said, went to Wells High School uh, after in 73 I graduated and went on to Maine Maritime Academy where I graduated in 77 and I have uh, gone to sea for the last uh, 45 years as a chief engineer and I was uh, formerly a five-year trustee of Kennebunk Light and Power and uh, the district there. Um, this is my second time writing as, uh, as Senator against uh, Mr. Rafferty, and uh, I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Tom? My name's Thomas Levine. I've lived in Berwick for a little over 30 years now, I think. Uh, I've served on the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I've been uh, coaching at the rec field, soccer, baseball, uh, all of that. Try to stay involved. Uh, been involved in some of the development in town. Um, making sure the developers uh, stay within the guardrails. And only once or twice we had to rise up. And all is well in Berwick. Thank you. Joe? Thank you very much. And first of all, I'd just like to thank Director uh, Kasten and the Berwick Communication Media for hosting this event. It's great to be a part of. So as far as um, my background is, I came to Maine in 1978. I had graduated uh, Springfield College in 77, taught for a year in Massachusetts. And then um, sadly, at the time, there was a there was a huge layoffs of, of teachers at the in that area. So I came to Maine and been here ever since. So I uh, spent my career at Kennebunk High School as a physical education teacher, football coach. I at one time coached wrestling, track, coached baseball, all, every, just about every sport there at the time. But in any case, so, uh, my wife and I live in Kennebunk. Uh, we raised, uh, I have three daughters. We raised in Kennebunk. They went through the Kennebunk school system. Uh, she is also a, a, a teacher having recently retired. In any case, I've been serving as a state senator for uh, the past four years and look forward to doing it again, and, and especially because I feel like we have some unfinished business to, to take care of. And um, I would like to serve you in any capacity that I could, so thanks. Thank you. Tristan? <clears throat> hey, uh, my name's Tristan Lazoy-McComsey. 
Uh, my wife and I moved to Berwick just a couple years ago, so Tom has, I think, 28 years on me here. Um, we uh, have a dog. I work in public education as an administrative assistant to the assistant superintendent up in uh, Regional School Unit 21, where Senator Joe's from. Um, I've worked every odd job uh, you can think of, landscaping, painting. Uh, I built composite boats out of fiberglass. Uh, I worked for UPS as a seasonal driver. Um, and now I've found myself in public education. Uh, looking forward to, uh, yeah, hoping to further the agenda in the public education and uh, represent you all. Thank you. Okay, um, we'll move on to the uh, questions. And uh, each question you'll have two minutes uh, for a response. So the uh, first, question as we're going to be rotating around so Tom will get the uh, first question please cite any specific legislative bills previously worked on or planned to be introduced to reduce or assist property tax owners from increasing tax burden I'm glad you asked um, in this past session uh, Republicans introduced a bill uh, to reduce electricity rates, kind of a big deal with CMP, and I'm sure you've all seen it. People posting their bills go from anywhere from 300 to 600. People that have summer homes that they unplug come back in the spring and owe two thousand dollars somehow. So we introduced a, a bill to uh, try to control CMP's uh, efforts a bit. Uh, we also uh, introduced a bill to implement a four-year moratorium on solar energy subsidies. That's another thing that appears on your bill. When you read the uh, when you read the ads that say, "In Maine, solar's free. Nothing's free. Somebody had to work for it, and somebody's paying for it." Uh, we also. Uh, Proposed a bill to reduce the cost of electricity by removing the 100 megawatt limit on renewable resource, resources of energy. And we proposed a bill to eliminate the current net energy billing policy in Maine. Uh, we brought all those to the floor in addition to 2,280 other bills, Joe, maybe. Uh, and those were uh, voted out by. Uh, the majority party. So we will bring them back again and we will keep trying. All set? All right, that's, that's all I have for you on that one. Thank you, Tom. Do you yep. mind repeating the question, please? Yes. Uh, no, I don't mind. <laughs> please cite any specific legislative bills previously worked on or planned to be introduced to reduce or assist property tax owners from increasing tax burden. Thank you. And, and there was, I wanted to be sure in terms of the tax piece. So in the last legislation, uh, legislature, we did pass a bill and specifically, uh, first, let me say, this is the number one question I get out on the road, knocking doors, and it's mostly from seniors. But we did offer some tax relief to seniors. Sadly, uh, it was a bill sponsored by Senator Trey Stewart out of Arusta County. And sadly, that didn't work out because it just became too burdensome from financially. So what we have done is we have taken anyone that's on uh, any, any type of um, seniors that are on any type of uh, income in terms of their uh, themselves. We've reduced the amount of, of, we've increased the amount that they can make through their pensions, for, or was that one time was 20%, $20,000 on their pension was taxable in Maine. We've increased that up to 30 and working towards $35,000. So that will help seniors. But the reality is um, our day-to-day, -day, we have to find another way to help fund schools. Because if you look at your tax bill, you're gonna see that the majority of the bill is based on, uh, goes towards education. So I think we need to look at and explore other ways 
to help fund school, help, help fund education, build schools, and work towards reducing that bill because it is unsustainable for most people in Maine. And I'm talking about the working class people. Uh, so we just can't do that. We have to find other ways <clears throat> to work that down. Uh, and so in terms of what I'm looking at, hopefully is a bill that would allow local communities to look Sorry, my time's up. <laughs> All right, thank you. I'll get back to that one. All right. Tristan? Yeah, uh, so we rank 36th in the country in property tax rates, which doesn't appear great at a distance, but I do think it's worth pointing out that we have better rates than our neighbors in Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Uh, somehow Massachusetts, Massachusetts has a lower rate than us, but that's besides the point. Um, I couldn't find a bill that reduces property taxes for Maine's residents by increasing taxes on short-term rentals like Airbnb and, Airbnb and VRBO, but that's what I think we should be looking into. Um, of course, I would need to look a lot more at data before drawing up a bill, but I think it's fundamentally messed up that we're going to have rental homes available to tourists while Mainers are running out of options. Um, if the owners of the rentals don't agree with the new rates, then they can sell and then we have more options on the market. Um, and if they're able to work with the higher tax rates, then we can lower the property taxes for year-round residents, uh, like I think most of our district is. Uh, and if it, falls, if it fails in one aspect, it'll at least provide relief in another. Thank you. Scott? Yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say, uh, you know, I've never served in the legislature or the Senate, so as far as bills going, uh, I'd have to first look at the bill to make sure it's a good bill. And and also, I'd like to say, I, uh, being at uh, Kenny Bunk Light and Power, I was able to uh, vote to reduce the rates there four, four times in five years. And uh, since I've left, uh, the ratepayers just got, got a nice letter in the mail that their rates are going to increase. Um, you know, it's a shame. It's a shame that painters have to pay so much for electricity. And uh, so we, we need to look at, you know, the bill good and uh, see if it's, number one, financially uh, viable and if it's sustainable. Um, and, you know, then we need to pass the, ba pass the bill based on the facts that are given by experts and, and you know, uh, the public, what, they, what their input is. You know, we don't want to go by party I don't want to go by party lines. I want people to be unified, on, especially on energy or on major bills that's going to take money away from seniors. So uh, I would definitely look at it hard before I voted on it. Um, I would just like to say that I am a, a moderate uh, socially and, and fiscally conservative, and, uh, and I would work hard on the bill that was put for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, the next question. Um, in uh, September, on September 30th, uh, 2024, uh, DAFS analysts are projecting a massive budget deficit with shortfalls expected to be placed on taxpayers. What are your plans to address the, the uh, deficit and shortfalls as forecasted by DAFS in order to avoid casting the debt further onto property tax owners? And uh, let's see, uh, Joe, you're up first. Thank you. So again, you know, here it is that the, the property tax payers are, are under heavy burden. So we have to really take a close look at that to see how we can. But in terms of looking to the immediate future uh, and short and long term, we have to, and I think we're doing a good job of building a good uh, job core in Maine. Uh, and I think with if we can continue that growth, um, that we will see uh, not only salary rise, but our, you know, we'll benefit from that in terms of the long time. The uh, wind energy area, as an example, has offered tremendous opportunities. 
uh, as has the potential for all of our tradesmen and the growth in that area. There's a shortfall in Maine currently, the housing issue, that has a directly related to the need for 80,000 additional homes to be built. And we don't have the capacity to do so. We don't have the people that can do that right now. So we have to work at encouraging growth in the state. Our population is increasing, but it's ever so slowly. And we know our population is aging. Um, and you know we are the oldest population in Maine. We have the most percentage-wise, 65 plus, including me, uh, people in terms of age uh, in the country. So those we have to look at those things so that we are you know, leading on the way and we're helping ourselves by creating new jobs, mm -hmm. creating a stronger workforce and education. Uh, a lot of those areas we are expanding education. But we're also in trying to encourage all the areas of our shortfalls to get people to enter different areas, rural areas, where they can go in and work. And potentially, the attraction is if we can set programs up that allow them potentially some debt relief from their college loans and so forth, if they will go in and commit to a particular town uh, for a, a designated amount of time. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Tristan? I'm not going to pretend like I know the correct answer or that I could even figure out how to rescue a state from an impending budget deficit uh, within the time that we've been given. Um, I can tell you that even if I did have an answer, I think the majority of the House uh, probably wouldn't even consider my proposal. Um, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but in your freshman year in the House, um, you're more so there just to stop bad bills than you are to rescue the state from you are correct. impending doom. Um, and so uh, with that being said, as House members put forth ideas to address the forecasted deficit, I would do everything in my power to make sure that the legislature isn't just kicking the ball down the road or digging us into a deeper hole. Um, I think the obvious answer is um, to find money from other programs and free up spending money, but I think that if we consulted professionals and had all of the representatives working together, then we could figure out a smarter and more responsible way to move forward. There's a lot of very decent, smart people up in Augusta, um, and we have many resources. I don't have them here today. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you just got to use your sources and take it from there. Thank you. Scott? So. Um, when the end of the legislative uh, year, uh, we had a uh, nine, uh, approximately $992 million uh, uh, surplus. And uh, they're projecting in the end of uh, 2025 a um, billion dollar deficit. I mean, that's disgraceful. Uh, you know, it's just spending going wild. We need to reduce the costs and the spending on pet projects in this in this uh, state. If we don't, um, we're going to go like all the other states in the union that have massive def deficits. And how is that going to affect our children? How is that going to affect our education for the, for the children? Um, so, we, number one, we need to look at policies again and bills again and see what we're spending on them and cut the spending. Um, Number two, you know, we spent, um, well, in Portland, uh, $3.2 .2 million on 85 undocumented people for housing. 85 million. How could that help? Couldn't that have helped, uh, you know, our poor in our state? You know, what are we doing? That's all I have. Thank you. Tom? Well, as mentioned, we ended the session with uh, $932 million in surplus. And appropriations has advised us in 2025, we're looking at a $1 billion shortfall. Uh, the spending in Augusta is crazy. And it's all pet projects. We have turned our back on seniors. We have turned our back on veterans. And we are allocating millions of dollars for I'll use the appropriate term, the new Mainers. Um, just a couple weeks ago, 
our governor uh, issued a grant to CMP, $415 million to help them improve their infrastructure. I see my bill. I think they're profitable enough. Um, we also, uh, just a couple other items that we were hoping to chip away with uh, from this tax burden, we introduced a bill to uh, cap the ability <laughs> of municipalities to increase their assessments in a one-year period. That failed. Um, the previous budget, when I entered the, uh, the legislation, uh, the operating budget was eight million, eight, I'm sorry, eight billion dollars. That's for 1.3 million residents. We still have 1.3 million dollar residents, legal ones, uh, and the, uh, the budget that uh, was pushed through was 13.8 billion. The government does not make money. It's all revenue from taxes. So to address this shortfall, just so everyone's aware, uh, they're looking at cutting the cost sharing to counties, which will raise property taxes, and taking money from the education budget. That's the answer in this current majority party for the shortfall. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so those first two questions were submitted uh, by the uh, uh, community. Uh, these, uh, these questions were uh, developed, um, the following questions were, were, uh, were developed to try and, uh, um, as I had said earlier, get a better understanding of each candidate. So the first question is, uh, relates to core values and decision making. Uh, what three principles form the core of your political beliefs, and how do you ensure these values are reflected in your decision making? And Tristan, you're up first, please. All right. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we are all on the same team. Uh, I want to be a proper representation of this district, and I cannot do that unless we are acting like a team. Teams rely on communication, and they sometimes disagree, but at the end of the day, we all know that our fates are tied. As a default, I will use my best judgment when making decisions, but if you give me your opinion or experience on a matter, I will take it to heart. The second pillar of my core values is that money has no place in politics. I think that Maine Clean Elections is a great program and it is incredibly effective at keeping outside money from interrupting our democratic process, but I thought the best way forward would simply be to accept no money. Uh, once in office, the only debt I would owe is to you all, my constituents. Uh, lastly, data is more important than political ideology. My political beliefs weren't formed by the media, but by spreadsheets. I spent a lot of time analyzing Maine's data with that of comparable states, and I think that we're doing pretty darn well, but there's so much room for improvement. Uh, I would use this principle to ensure that my time as representative is spent on projects that are undeniably necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Scott? So, uh, like I said before, uh, you know, education on, on the bill, uh, whatever it's going forward to get the proper uh, input and facts for that, um, and then come together. We have to come together. We come up with the solutions we need and find the best solution and, and move forward with that. And, and again, it's got to be fiscally viable. If we don't have the money for it, we, and if it's not sustainable, uh, we need to look el elsewhere. Um, Maine is a poor state. It's only $13 billion. I bet you look at the other states, you're talking well, well over $20 billion. So we have to be really vigilant in how we make our bills, look at our bills, see how it's going to affect policy, and see if we can pay for it. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? When I look at a bill, I don't look at it as a Republican. I don't look at it as it, what side of the room it came from. First, I look at it to see if the math works. Then I look at it to see if it's sustainable. Uh, an example of that was the really popular senior tax stabilization program. It was unsustainable. The first year, the cost of the state was $3 million. Everybody could live with that. 
The second year it was seven million. The third year it was projected at twenty four million and the fourth year thirty six million. So that's why that program was abandoned. It was poor language and the math did not work. So I look at everything like that and, and I, I'm in town. I'm very reachable. And people do tell me their feelings, even if I don't ask. So I bring the residents of Berwick and North Berwick, I bring their voice to Augusta. It's not my opinion, it's theirs that I carry with me. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. And Joe. Uh, thanks. So in, in response to my core values, my, de, you know, and the decision making, I have to say that um, I don't separate this out from my political world versus the Joe Rafferty world because I'm, you know, I've, I'm in politics. Yes, I don't consider myself a politician. Um, I, you know, I just have never envision that to be honest with you my i've been a dad i'm a husband i'm a teacher i'm a coach i wear a lot of hats my values make me who i am they're consistent in the way i live day to day and approach my life at all times uh, i embrace all manners regardless of color uh religion or anything else i embrace all manners and i i do i did and continue to do that to everyone i meet i did it throughout my teaching career um, the, all those roles that I talked about, uh, they're consistent, they're built on a foundation of honesty, trust, and integrity. Uh, I, I'm a very black and white person, and when it comes to making a decision, uh, and in this case, m my uh, political world, it is, I'm black and white. I think of all people that I know, starting with my own family, how is this going to impact them? I get out in the community, I talk to the community. Uh, my Senate district is 35 to 37,000 people. So there's a lot of different ways to reach out um, and, and forms of communication and so forth. Uh, but I am a team player and I don't talk about I. I'm not an I person. I talk about what can we do. And that I think that we can work this through. Um, and, and, and again, I commit myself to doing what is best for people in our district, people in Maine. I look at it, it's a whole body. It's not my district, your district, it's our Maine. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, next question. Uh, constituent engagement. How will you gather feedback from the community regarding their needs and concerns and what is your promised response time to constituent inquiries and issues? And uh, we're uh, back to Scott to start off. Okay, basically, um, you know, there's emails, Facebook, that uh, anyone can contact me. And I would, I would take those and I would, I, I, I would answer them. Um, you got letters to the editors. I would be I'd be reading uh, on my in my local uh, town and also state. Um, I'd also at I've also attended public meetings, town halls, um, and see what the people think. You know, it's real simple. Um, you know, and take the phone call when they call. You know, listen to the people and uh, and get the feedback that I need to make the proper decision. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Tom? Well, I, uh, I think probably most of the communication I get is when I attend local events here in town. Um, I try to stay out of the town government. It's not where I play. Um, but, you know, I've been approached by businesses that are hampered by licensing issues and hurting their profitability. I've been approached by people that are being crushed under uh, the cost of their medications they need. <clears throat> so I respond right away. Uh, usually they will, will pick a day and I'll say, yep, that's the day I'll see you. And I go and see, or I'm getting ready to go and see them. And they go, well, I'm busy today. How about tomorrow? So I like to let them reschedule before I reschedule. So it's, it's very easy in Berwick and North Berwick to just be visible and be approachable. Uh, and I'm still working on that. 
Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Joe? Thank you. So as I mentioned earlier, I mean, the, the district, as far as the Senate goes, is a little bit bigger. So there's no way I'm going to get to know 35 to 37,000 people uh, covering five different communities between Kennebunkport and, and coming down into Berwick. So we do our best to collect data, which gives us a very clear picture of, of people's overall needs. Um, currently, I do so by sending out surveys, seeking feedback via my office. We post on Facebook in an effort to highlight resources, share news and events that take place in the district. We send out e-blasts uh, as well as news columns relating to legislature, our issues going on. And I also um, send out feedback, uh, request feedback from people. What are your issues? We, get, we try to take those in. Uh, people have access to my legislative email, my personal email, and my personal cell phone. I am not hesitant to share that and I'll do it tonight if you like I've done it many many times and will continue to uh, we I pay attention to what's going on around us uh, whether it's in our schools which I'm on the education committee so that's really important to me but business as well because I'm on the idea committee but we pay special attention to the issues uh, we have lots of great news reporting in our area and if something's going on in our district typically somebody will tip me off but I'm available 24 7 uh, my as I said, you can call me anytime and I will answer. If I don't answer, it's because I am out doing one of my other jobs, like I might be substituting at school or driving a bus, as I was doing before I came here. So I want to be involved. I've been involved. I'll stay involved. I'll stay active. Regardless of the outcome, um, I'll be around. Thank you. Tristan? Uh, my goal is to meet every generation where they already are. Uh, I'll keep a Facebook profile active for public discourse. Uh, I'll update posts on my website, which I will be launching later this week. Uh, I'll offer up an email and phone number that are dedicated strictly to the constituents. Uh, I'll create a Google survey to submit anonymous or uh, unrecognizable feedback if you want to speak privately. Um, I'd be happy to meet up with organized groups for some recreational activities in person. Um, as a millennial, you can count on me to be checking my socials and getting back to you within a day, so long as your question warrants a simple response. If your question requires more diligent research, um, I'll let you know and then I'll get back to you once I've formed a worthy answer. Um, and just kind of while we're on like constituent engagement, I uh, just wanted to kind of say that uh, I'm in the same boat as a lot of you. Um, I work in public education, so I make $24 an hour, and uh, my wife works in retail. Um, if you're struggling, we are too. Uh, we can't afford another tax increase, so uh, when we speak to each other, trust me when I say I know how you're feeling, because uh, yeah, it's tough. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question, economic growth. What strategies do you have in place to create more jobs and stimulate economic growth in Maine, particularly in rural areas? And we'll start with Tom. Well, uh, I think what the stumbling block uh, is, is housing. And if we could get Augusta on the same page as, as I said, to stop funneling money to these pet projects and address the needs of Mainers. Uh, housing first, uh, it, grants for employers, uh, growth in these, uh, it, in, with the universities, uh, all of these things contribute to employment growth, uh, healthy career growth, uh, the housing is the big thing. You know, we, we've, we've got to stop giving it away. We've got to turn more inward and take care of our citizens, take care of our uh, veterans, take care of our police, take care of our firefighters. Uh, we have to stop being a place that everybody leaves <laughs> to go to work. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? I think that um, Maine is doing, uh, you know, 
it's, it's hard work. Bottom line, it's hard work. We're trying to uh, encourage more growth, more workers to come to our state. But in order to do that, you have to have wages that are going to support housing, wages that are going to support your health, uh, your health needs and your, all, all of your so-called economic needs. And that is very difficult. There's no simple task, absolutely no simple task. So we, we can do it by potentially encouraging Again, uh, attracting. So when I look and I see that we um, have some paid um, family, you know, f family leave coming, that's an attraction. I know I have three daughters. They all grew up in Maine. Not one of them lives in Maine now. I got one in Mass, one in California, one in Rhode Island. The number two top issues were number one, salaries. Number two. Paid family leave. They want to have families, uh, and and um, and then the th the third, obviously, uh, from that point, was a child care issue. And we're doing a lot, we're taking a lot of steps towards those and targeting. We, you know, we're uh, doing those things throughout the state. And I know in my particular committee, we've heard a lot about the needs of families just from an educational standpoint. And if we go into the, the health care uh, committee, you, you hear the needs there. People are hurting. Um, we need to do something to up the minimum wages. Uh, those They aren't livable wages. We need to get people on livable wages. There's no nothing simple about it. But I, I believe that we can collectively find a path and uh, I encourage us to continue looking thank you sorry everyone Tristan <laughs> okay Keep talking. Yeah, okay, yeah, so, so, so let's keep going. Um, so my wife and I are currently renovating our house in Berwick, and I view the functionality of government very similar in the same way. Well, when something is broken, a quick fix is rarely the solution. So if you're going to do something, you better do it right, and you better be considering how it's going to fit in with the rest of the project. When it comes to economic growth, I want to see growth in careers that will remain in Maine. And I want uh, the product to be something that enriches our state more than it drains it. So in terms of large scale economic growth, I would love to see more manufacturing and industrial production, but only as long as the workers are protected and the environment is respected. Um, in more rural areas, I think the best way forward is to incentivize people to start small businesses and make sure that they have the infrastructure to ship and sell their goods to the rest of the state and beyond. Uh, I lived in rural Vermont for a couple of years, and all my friends there worked in the restaurant industry, as I did as well. Um, but everyone had side gigs. Uh, they grew flowers, they built pizza ovens, they crafted cutting boards or had farm stands. Uh, it was an extra source of income that everyone had. Uh, we've re-entered an era in this country and in the state where small businesses aren't competing against the Walmarts and the Amazons of the world. Uh, small businesses kind of have their own corner of the market. Um, and I would like to see the amount of small businesses in Maine, especially in rural areas, uh, double or triple by the end of the decade. Uh, I think the best way for these small businesses to get off the ground is by offering tax breaks for the first couple of years by getting them on, uh, and by getting them on Maine Health until they've reached a certain gross income. I can say for certain that my wife wouldn't uh, have had the opportunity to launch her business if it weren't for the health insurance offered by my job. And not everyone has spouses whose career offers such benefits. So really what we need to do is just give people an opportunity to start small businesses and it'll enrich the state. Thank you. Scott? Well, uh, I've been a small businessman since 1993. I've owned a small uh, cottage resort in uh, Kennebunk, Maine. And uh, I've seen the ups and downs of our economy and how it affects me, and workers, too. Um, I've also uh, sailed, and uh, almost every country in the world uh, I've been to, including North Korea. And, and I've seen um, real poverty. And uh, here in America, we have, and in this state, we have tremendous wealth compared to that. But if we don't do something here in, in Maine, we're going to have real problems. Because Maine cannot afford to lose Bath Iron Works. They cannot afford to lose Portsmouth Naval Shipyard or Pratt & Whitney. 
And if we don't do something about our taxes, if we don't lower our taxes, our energy costs, we will lose our manufacturing base. And without that, the, our workforce is going to go away. Now, true, that small businesses is a, is a backbone of the state of Maine. And we do need to support them, the wages and everything. But the first thing is we need to bring down taxes. We need to help the businessmen and allow them to pay higher wages, which in turn allow people to go buy the things they need. And to reduce those costs of those things, we, uh, what I would do first, if I could, um, would be to um, lower the, um, reduce the, or uh, remove temporarily the uh, tax on diesel fuel so that he, the heating fuel and diesel fuel this winter will be cheaper for senior citizens and plus the transportation costs for truckers delivering our goods will re be reduced. And then also it will bring down the cost of goods for our people. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next question. Accountability and transparency. How will you ensure transparency in your decision-making processes, and what measures will you take to prevent conflicts of interest while in office? And uh, first up is Joe. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm not really sure what conflict of interest I could have. I mean, I just, I'm a retired person. I don't own any businesses. I don't really have any connections to any big industry or any pet projects or any of that. Um, I am who I am. And I am, you know, when Scott mentioned there's a lot of wealth in Maine, but believe me, there's a lot of poverty in Maine. There is a lot of poverty in Maine. I've seen it in my own classroom. I've seen it in my, on my own teams. So in terms of transparency, I, I'll do anything and everything I can to help people. I, I am very compassionate uh, in terms of that. I hate to see anyone go without, and I hate to see anyone in need. I'm willing to help. It's not that I'm ready to give up, you know, give away the farm. No, I'm not. Uh, but I know what it's like to live on a pension. I know what it's like um, in terms of retirement. That's why I have multiple part-time jobs, because it is, it's challenging. It's very challenging, and the economy is, uh, is difficult from time to time. We have ups, we have downs. But again, I, uh, in terms of tra transparency, ask anyone that knows me, what you see is what you get. Uh, there's no hidden agenda in, um, from me, in me, I, I, I wouldn't know how to operate that way. Thank you. Thank you. Tristan? All right. It's been my firm belief that the root of all dysfunction in politics ultimately boils down to money in politics. And my first step in preventing conflicts of interest happened months ago when I decided not to take a dime in donations. Obviously, there are plenty of safeguards in place to stop politicians from being corrupted by donations, especially at this level within state politics, but the only way to be absolutely sure was to run a campaign without donations, or without money. Uh, in this day and age, there's no excuse not to have an outlet explaining to your constituents how you are representing them and why. Uh, there's a congressman from North Carolina named Jeff Jackson who's reached notor national notoriety by posting videos uh, explaining what's happening within Congress on the national level. Uh, from an insider's perspective, uh, I would plan on doing the same thing for the sake of transparency so that you know what's going on, why we're doing it, and how we're doing it. Uh, Jeff has the integrity to use his platform not to shame his political opposition, which I think is paramount but purely to speak about the events that are happening in the House that led to what you see on the news. To put it bluntly, he tells you how the sausage is made. I will not use my platform to garner favor for myself or my party. In fact, I think it will ultimately paint sort of a convoluted and sometimes boring picture of the legislature. Um, in practice, this will look a lot like a modern version of uh, FDR's fireside chats. It'll be honest, calm, and transparent. Thank you. Scott? So um, being transparent, you know, most, most of the bills, and I think all the bills, that go before the legislature or, or to the Senate uh, go through public uh, open hearings. You know, that's, that's good. Uh, 
That would be one way of, of doing it in the committees. Uh, also, input uh, uh, input from ex experts, again, from facts base, and get that out to the public so that they can help make a, a um, informed decision and s give us the solutions that we need. Um, you know, these all these things are gonna, you know, decide my decisions going forward. You know, I'm gonna listen to both sides. I'm, I'm, I'm that type of guy. Being an engineer, I'm gonna look at everything before I make a decision. So um, that's where I stand. Thank you. Tom? Well, I've always been championing, championing, uh, a fight against conflict of interest. I, I, you know, whether it's local, uh, you know, I just spent a lot of time and energy making sure that wouldn't be an issue. When I won the election uh, in 22, uh, I'm career real estate commercial. Uh, I surrendered my main license. I didn't want any dotted lines, any conflict of interest, anyone being able to say, well, did you vote this way because it benefited you in this way? I eliminated that possibility. To Scott's point, when a bill is created, it goes to committee. I serve on the Joint Standing Committee of Taxation. Uh, we do have hearings, sometimes too many, sometimes too lengthy. Um, but we listen to everybody. Uh, because we don't know. We know what we do. We don't know what um, the, the people that, the, uh, that depend on these bills passing do. So we listen to everybody. Uh, and I, I think Joe can attest to, there is a, there is a camera every four feet in Augusta. Oh, yeah. uh, we are live streamed when we are in session. Um, there is there's very little possibility of someone, even when we're crowded with lobbyists in, in the hallway. Um, you know, they approach us. Uh, they tell us why they hope we will vote a certain way on something. You just add it to the facts and weigh it out. So I will always work very diligently to make sure there is no conflict of interest and total transparency. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I think that was everybody, yes? Yes. All right, uh, the next question. Long-term vision. Where do you see Maine in the next 10 years, and what long-term strategies do you have for sustainable development and growth? Uh, Tristan, you're up first. Um, realistically, I don't think that we're going to change that much over the next 10 years, that no matter who is in charge. Uh, I think that both parties uh, know that Mainers don't care for far left or far right agendas. We're a very centrist state, and we don't want to be pushed either way too far. My aspirations in the House are to maintain or ideally grow our population of young professionals in the state. Um, I would love to see more people in tech move here with remote jobs to raise their families and contribute to our economy. I have many friends in New Hampshire who would love to move to Maine because they know that our culture and our geography is better, uh, but they all refuse to take that big of a hit on their income via our income tax. Uh, if we're looking for sustainable growth in our population and our economy, then we can't expect it to come from wealthy retirees buying up the coastline. We need young families that you won't find elsewhere. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we need young professionals who will only come here if we lower the income tax and offer programs to young families that you won't find elsewhere, like a statewide pre-K program. If it's feasible, um, I'd also like to entertain subsidized child care so that both parents can work while raising their children. Um, in this economy, it feels almost impossible to raise a family on a single income, uh, especially when you're on a uh, public education uh, salary. Um, the bottom line is I think we need to do everything we can to make sure young professionals are able to stay in the job market and raise their family at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Scott? So um, I look at this two visions that I see for Maine. Uh, number one is we've, the last eight years, we've had uh, one party rule up in Augusta. 
And uh, with that, uh, the current policies uh, and if they don't change these current, current policies, I see our state running into big deficits like other progressive going states. It's, it, it's going to happen. The problem is we, we need, we are a poor state. We can't, we can't solve these problems. We can't pay for them, the policies. So um, the public needs to elect conservative-minded legislatures, senators and a governor, conservative, conservative, fiscally conservative. And if they can get back to sane policies, fiscally uh, sustainable policies, then we can make Maine the way it should be. Thank you. Tom? Well, it's... Uh it, even in my role, it's hard to say where, we'll, we, we, where we will be in 10 years, but the spending has to stop. As I said before, we have to turn inward. We have to support our citizens. We have to stop giving away millions and millions of dollars. Um, I've spoken with a lot of businesses, and this may not be popular in this group, but... I will tell you, small businesses are scared to death of this Family Medical Leave Act. It's poorly written. Uh, it goes into effect January 1st. It comes out of all of our salaries. Um, there's, there, the, the, it's, it lacks structure. I, I've had employers tell me, I hire a person for two months and they want 12 weeks off paid. It's going to put me under. So the other element that I think is destructive is the, the constant focus on raising the minimum wage. And I know Portland leads this charge. And as a result, in the last three weeks, 14 restaurants have closed in Portland because they can no longer pay the people the legal minimum wage. They can't afford their electricity and the cost of uh, of goods and we all feel that cost too going to the grocery store uh, inflation is it's not in control it's it occasionally pauses when it benefits those speaking about it we need to focus on getting control of inflation minimum wage is not meant to support a family it's a bridge for a person with no job skills entering the job market. You know, it, back in my day, it was a high school job. That was a minimum wage. We, I don't think it was ever anticipated that a, a family would try to live on minimum wage. And, and that's the conversation that's going on now. So these things are littering the progress that we need to make. And she says, I'm done. Thank you. All right, Joe. Uh, thanks very much. So um, looking at this, I know that statistically uh, Maine's uh, has seen an increase in personal uh, total personal income, which uh, I know it's, it's probably true on paper for me, but when I walk around and I reach into my pocket, it seems like I don't know where they got that stat from, okay? Because like we said, everything costs more. Everything is more expensive. So um, we do need to do something to drive down the force. But when I look at and talk to people, as an example, the other day, talking with folks that work for the state of Maine, the university system, we have professional people in that system making $20 an hour. That's professional people. Okay. Now they that that regardless of um, you know, th that's just not a livable wage. And those people are, fa are family members. Uh, they have families. They're raising kids. And, you know they're trying to move forward. And it and it's it's tough. It's tough. Um, so my vision down the road, uh, I hope that we continue to support our current clean energy goals. I don't know what impact that's ultimately going to have. I don't think it's going to turn a switch on the environmental issues uh, overnight, but it's gonna have an impact. Uh, I think that we are able to provide affordable housing. I think that we can work at that. If we can get the tradesmen 
skilled tradesmen in. Our community, free community college has, has been a big benefit to that. Climate-wise, uh, I'd like to see our shoreline exist down the road. I used to love going to the beach and be able to sit there and lay there right up through high tide. And uh, today you can't find sand at high tide in a lot of our coastal communities. Uh, our education system needs to be fixed. We rank in the, uh, I want to see us in the top half ranked in the top half, not in the uh, lowest 20% nationally. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that uh, was everybody else. Yes. yes. Okay, so uh, we're uh, doing pretty well on time. Uh, that's, that's it for questions. I would uh, like to just uh, go down the line if you uh, um, had any questions. Uh, closing comments and if you want to just remind uh, um, people how they can get in touch with you uh, if uh, they have questions uh, you know uh, sorry he doesn't want to go first <laughs> um, so let's say well actually it would be you starting next <laughs> oh sorry so repeat the question so uh, just if you had any wrap-up comments and if you want to remind folks how they can get in touch with you if they have any uh, um, questions or want to talk to you subsequent to uh, tonight. So like I said, uh, those who are just joining in maybe, uh, my name is Bradley Scott Ducharme. I'm running for Maine State Senate, District 34, uh, four towns of Berwick, North Berwick, um, Wells, Kenny Bunk, and Kenny Bunk Board. And uh, I would just like to say that I have uh, I've worked just like it, probably all, all four of these three people um, since I was a young boy right here in this in, in this county. Uh, I've worked almost every day of my life. I've whether it's been in business, whether it's been in uh, engineering, whether it's or serving serving on uh, Kenny Buck Light and Power. Um, I've always wanted to do something, and I want to do something now as a as retired chief engineer for the state of Maine to bring that expertise that I have in energy and in business to the people of Maine and to try to help solve our problems with, with both parties agreeing to those solutions. So, and, and try to bring down the cost or, and then also the only way that we can keep the cost is to bring in more manufacturing more businesses and more people. So um, I'm up for the channel challenge and I appreciate your vote on uh, November 5th. Thank you. Tom? Well, I, as, as Tristan mentioned, uh, your first year in Augusta, if you do anything but listen, I think you're a fool. It's, it's an incredible process. I still am in awe when I walk in the building and it's the architecture, it's the history. Uh, but I'm nowhere near done. Um, I'd like to go back. I'd like your support. I am very reachable. I swear I, am, I must be on 11 neighborhood Facebook pages between Berwick and North Berwick, and they all reach out to me. Um, we have, uh, I have some handouts over there for all of you. Um, and we have, uh, and Joe and I both have uh, numbers, and uh, we have aides in Augusta that uh, take our calls up there when we're not in Augusta. So uh, we're very reachable up there, uh, but nowhere near done. Nowhere near. I'd like to go back and appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? Uh, thanks very much. Thanks for the evening. It's been my pleasure to be here. So um, I want to go back because I think we left uh, this session. Uh, I, I think you'd agree, sir, that we, we didn't finish. We had un unfinished business. There was too much left on the table. And, um, you know, it was this, I don't know what you want to call it, a political insider trading or whatever, but it, it, just, uh, it just didn't happen. And I think we, we have a lot to do. I have a, uh, a lot. I think that uh, Maine, you know, I'd like to see Maine in a much better place. I feel I can 
add to and bring to a lot of energy. I think if you've ever come to, I, I would encourage you to come to the State House and, and observe a committee meeting or go home and find one online. Look up a committee, pick a committee and watch. They, they tape everything, like you said about cameras. They're everywhere. Um, and you can watch any hearing. Uh, all the time, and anyone that goes up there has a right to address the committee. There's 13 legislators sitting there, and they're waiting for public input. We encourage it. We welcome it. We want it. We need to hear from you. Um, so from from that standpoint, uh, I really, I'm, I'm looking forward to going back. As I said, I, I, I feel as though there's, you know, there's, there's much more to do, and I'm ready, willing, and able to do it. Uh, my Number, by the way, again, 207-590-9902. That is my personal cell phone, um, and I would hope I answer right away, but I do a lot of other things that uh, you might get my message machine first, and, but I'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Tristan? Last time. There we go. <laughs> um, you can reach me um, uh, via email, Tristan Lazway, T R I S T A N L O Z U A W A Y at gmail.com. Uh, I'm going to be launching uh, the campaign announcement on Facebook shortly. Um, I'll have a website, reach me there. Um, plenty of ways to talk to me. I'll respond right away. Um, the one thing I want to really leave on the stage tonight is that I'm 33 years old, I have a public education salary, I'm struggling. Uh, I'm sure you are. Um, so I can't afford a tax hike. I know that it feels like uh, tax cuts are kind of like a conservative thing, but I can't afford them, so I'm not going to vote for them. Um, yeah, um, my wife and I are, you know, in our young 30s, and we want to start a family, and it's just not a feasible or responsible thing to do right now. So if things don't become more affordable, then, you know, it would be a shame for for a state's tax codes to write uh, write our family history. So, um, yeah, I mean, just because I have a D next to my name doesn't mean that uh, I'm going to raise the taxes. So, uh, yeah, um, thank you guys, and thank you all for joining me up here as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Appreciate the um, honesty and uh, the, um, it, it was, it didn't feel political, so I appreciate that. And um, to um, Maureen, thank you very much for keeping the time, and everybody did a great job staying on time. Uh, just a reminder to uh, anybody watching, voting is on Tuesday, November 5th, um, beginning at 8 a.m. and closing at 8 p.m. Absentee ballots are available now, and registered voters may request one by visiting the Town of Burke website. Uh, at uh, www.berwickmaine.org. You can click on departments, click on, then click on town clerk, uh, and then in the menu bar on the left, you'll see absentee ballot at the top. And there will be links to obtain an absentee ballot uh, in the, um, the menu bar. Uh, yes, there'll be links to obtain an absentee ballot in the green menu bar on the left. You can click on elections for more election information. So, uh, good luck to you all. Thank you very much for attending. And I think that's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. very much. All right. Thank all you. Right. All right, Joe. Thanks. Thanks very much. Good yeah. luck to you. Good to see you again, Joe. Good luck to you, Joe. Well done. Pleasure to meet you. Well yeah, you as well. Well spoken. Well done. Thank, Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Joe.